Let's take a look at your opponent, um, really charming guy named Max Miller. Uh, here's what he had to say about Israel and Palestine. These individuals are savages. Israel has taken a measured approach since 1948 in its inception as a country, and Israel is a country and will forever be the home of the Jewish state. I want to be something very clear. Israel needs to take the gloves off. Murder is murder and terrorism is terrorism. Turn the place into a parking lot. I believe Israel is going to get a lot bigger after this conflict as opposed to smaller. Well, you know, here again, uh, incendiary, hostile, intemperate remarks by American leaders lead to war. Uh, the licensing of genocide, which that's what uh, Congressman Miller did there, the licensing of genocide. Uh, will not only lead to the destruction of, of Gaza and West Bank, but it will lead to wider war. So I have challenged Mr. Miller to debate that. Uh, but when he talks about a, uh, an, a um, you know, uh, the approach that Israel has taken over the years, I think it's important to, uh, to recall Nakba, to recall Tantura, to recall uh, Daryusin. These are all massacres for people who don't know or yeah, bombing the King David you. Hotel. Thank you. I, I think it's important to recall that because uh, Israel has, has played a role in, in frustrating the basic liberties of, of the people of uh, Gaza and, and the West Bank. And since October 7th, uh, what we have seen is uh, is the execution, the unfolding of the execution of a plan for uh, ethnic cleansing by means of genocide uh, in, in Gaza and the West Bank. And so Congressman Miller has licensed that. There's no two ways about it. He is, he is advocating a position that is actually antithetical to the interests of the American people because I don't know anybody out there who feels that we should be sending our sons and daughters into the region so that they could uh, stand by and be attendants while a genocide takes place. Our, our troops that are out there, there's over 10,000 of our troops out there right now in the region. And frankly, most of them are sitting ducks. An attack on any of their bases could be a, a flashpoint in a wider war. Uh, my first commitment is to no other country it is to the United States of America. And Mr. Miller, uh, bless him, uh, has, I think, a divided loyalty here. And uh, I think there are other members, he's not the only one, but he is one of the few who has openly called for genocide. And I am certainly challenging him on that in this campaign because we must find a resolution in the Middle East which does not involve the extermination of people. The very thought of that is 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 horrific, and it's happening right now. Over forty thousand dead Palestinians. I I regret the death of every Israeli uh, that happened on October seventh. But if we think that it's okay to uh, uh, to let Israel, the, the Netanyahu and uh, Ben Gavir and Smotrich uh, execute this plan, that that certainly will result in in wiping out Palestinians in Gaza. And, uh, and, and uh, West Bank, if we think that can happen without there being reprisals from the rest of the region, that's magical thinking. And we are in a moment right now where uh, Netanyahu is doing everything he can to try to frustrate any kind of an agreement or to keep, keep it going, keep the talk going while more and more people are getting killed. I, I'm, I find this as one of the darkest period in, 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 in world history, not just in American history. Well, you actually questioned um, Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu back in 2002. Let's show a clip of this. This is when B.B. Netanyahu was urging a, a preemptive strike against Iraq and arguing that it was to protect not just America, but to, to protect Israel, right? And right before this, uh, he had said something about not knowing all the details. Right. Okay, so here's... Um, because I, I, I share the concern that other members have articulated here 
about the effect that a preemptive attack on Iraq by the United States would have not only on, um, on the people of our country who would be called upon to wage that uh, and innocent civilians, but also the effect that it would have on, on Israel. Now, you stated in your remarks that um, if the United States launched a preemptive attack on Iraq, that Iraq uh, in Saddam Hussein, as you described it, dying gas, would be expected to uh, launch a counterattack on, on Israel. If the United States does not launch a preemptive attack on the uh, state of Iraq, do you see any indication that Iraq is prepared to launch an attack on Israel? First of all, let me, uh, let me comment on when I said I don't need to know, I meant I don't need the detailed, that detailed, uh, kind of detailed information that always involves, uh, just by the nature of the information, some uh, uh, indication of sources. And I, I, for one, try to avoid that uh, when I'm not in office. But I also say that if you connect the dots, you know, here's a, here's a man who, from the minute he, is, he achieved powers, is trying to... And here he is talking about Saddam Hussein. ...create a nuclear weapon. Uh, Twenty years ago, he's very close to producing it. He's foiled. He changes the technology to centrifuges that will prevent him being foiled again. The question I had, though, do you have any indication that Saddam Hussein is going to attack Israel? Oh, if he will attack Abs Israel. Absent a preemptive launch by the United States. I think it's, uh, I cannot uh, uh, tell you that he will attack Israel at a particular time. Uh, he, I think what you have to assume, and this is a fair assumption, that he doesn't have to necessarily directly attack Israel. What you can do, what these uh, people do, for example, the Taliban regime didn't directly attack the United States. It harbored a terrorist group that did the job for them. And this is precisely the problem. The problem is you're not dealing with Iraq alone. You're dealing with a terror network. You're dealing with a system where you have proxies. We now live in a world where these regimes have proxies. You talk about a network of terror. Uh, are there any other nations that you would recommend that the United States launch preemptive attacks upon at this point? Uh, first of all, are there other nations that are developing nuclear weapons? Yes. Uh, should, we, should we launch any preempt other preemptive attacks? First let me say what they are and then let me make a suggestion how to proceed. Thank you. Uh, the answer is categorically yes. Uh, the, uh, the two nations that are vying, competing with each other, who will be the first to achieve nuclear weapons uh, is Iraq and Iran. What was that experience like? And then we'll get into actually what this reveals. Bibi Netanyahu, now, you know, prime minister. And I have some mutual friends in the Cleveland area. Uh, we had a uh, cordial discussion after that. Uh, in, in which I won't, I, uh, I won't hold that against you. No, well, let me just tell you. You know, I'll talk to anybody in the cause of peace. And so I asked him uh, afterwards. I said, well, uh, if, if, and he wasn't talking just about Iraq and Iran. He was talking about Syria as well. Remember, this is before the United States launched the attack on, on Iraq, which uh, Mr. Netanyahu, you know, alleged had nuclear weapons. That was one of the things about weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. But I saw him in the hall afterwards. And I asked him, I said, well, if you, if you believe that, uh, you know, Iraq, Iran, and Syria our, our, our threats, why do you want you to, why do you want us to attack them? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? He goes, oh, no, 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 you have to do this. Uh, what he has done skillfully, and, and you know, one thing about Netanyahu, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't like anything about his policies, but he is very shrewd. And what he did then, and by the way, 22 years later in front of the Congress is to make a case that, that America and Israel are one. I mean, he's done that. He has done that skillfully. You know, over 50 standing ovations in front of Congress, uh, uh, you know, just a, a, a month or so ago. So you have to give him credit for being a real shrewd politician. However, why should the United States be manipulated into a war against Iraq, which, you know, we bought hook, line, and sinker over my leading the opposition. Or today, even worse, a war against Iraq, Iran, which he wants to use the United States to advance Israel's agenda against 
Iran, what are we doing here? We're forgetting who we are as a nation. You know, this is what we were warned hundreds of years ago about going around the world looking for dragons to slay. We can't be, we can't be advancing the interests of Israel in the Middle East and maintain our stability as a nation here at home. So, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu, who, uh, again, is very skilled, has, in order to avoid going to jail, has made book with the uh, far right elements in the Likud, led by uh, Ben Gavir and uh, Mr. Smotrich. And as a result, their thinking, which frankly, uh, in some cases, is a misreading of biblical history, advocates the destruction of the Palestinian people by linking them with the story of the Amalek from thousands of years ago in the Bible. Now, I know there are people who want Jesus to come. I know that. I know there are, there are people who believe uh, that, that when he comes, we're all going to be uh, together again in heaven. But let me say something. We have to be very careful in our policy that we don't feed into these uh, messianic conceptions of, of how the world is going to advance or even end, that we don't make it a self-fulfilling prophecy by stumbling and bumbling in our foreign policy, which we're doing right now. Anyone who points out this kind of dual loyalty that you pointed out earlier will be smeared as an anti-Semite. And yet, as you pointed out, it's Netanyahu, it's Israel, it's Zionists who are making the argument again and again that Israel and the United States not only have a special relationship, but they, that there's no daylight between them. Well, he's, he's done that in terms of of pairing the United States aspirations with Israel's aspirations, which are continually being defined in a way that uh, is homicidal. So, you know, we, uh, th this idea that you cannot challenge this thinking without being called an anti-Semite is, uh, is dangerous because I think every, everyone appreciates the, the ethic of, uh, that's immersed in, in Judaism. I mean, myself, you know, I believe in tikkun olam. I think we're here to heal the world, not destroy it. And, and I've tried to live my life in that way. Uh, but for those who are trying to twist it and turn it into a, uh, uh, an aspiration of a religious ethno-nationalist state, whoa. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, there was a song, I think it was One Tin Soldier from the 70s. Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You can justify it in the end. 